Okay, so what I'm doing right here, I'm painting brown. I cannot remember what brown I, I was using here. Most of the colors um, that, that you're about to see, unless I actually highlighted it, I can't remember what I used and I'm quite embarrassed by that because usually I keep better notes than that. Um, but I think this was just like a red brown or something. And I painted this on all the panel lines and stuff. There's not that many of them, but uh, yeah, I went ahead and just very carefully did some pre-shading of these lines. And you'll see how those turned out. I think they turned out pretty darn well in the end. Uh, this was kept on a very low pressure, uh, thinned quite a bit actually. I think close to about a 50-50 mix and uh, uh, quite a bit of paint retarder. Tamiya Acrylic Paint Retarder. If you're having any troubles with your airbrushing and you're using Tamiya brand acrylics, um, just go get a bottle of that. It will save your life. It is truly wonderful stuff. Uh, the other thing too is since this is 70 second scale, this was really hard for me to record. So I got my big fat finger in the way uh, all the time there. But I'm um, going to work out something better for that. So sorry for that. But yeah, you can just see I just painted down along the rivet detail and along the flaps and uh, just went ahead and did that to the, the whole uh, surface of the aircraft. Okay, what you're about to see right here is what I'd like to call, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, when I was researching the color for this aircraft, like I mentioned earlier, there's quite a few examples of it still surviving today and most of them seem to have all the same color. I went ahead and painted in between the lines. I've done something like this on a project just recently and I thought I'd try it in a smaller scale here. This is Sky. I, I can't remember the, the number for it, but it's just Tamiya Sky and it's basically that greenish color that they used on the RAF aircraft in uh, World War II. I thought this would be a really good idea, but it turned out to be a bit too green. What I should have used um, was some sky blue. I think that's XF23. Uh, again, hindsight is 2020. Uh, thankfully, I have a J21 that Rob sent me. And when I get to doing that one, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely do the same process, um, but use that light blue on there instead. It's gonna look a lot better. But it didn't turn out as bad. But it still kind of bugs me that I, it was one of those things I didn't pick up on until closer, kind of to the end of the build, um, that it would match the final color on here. So, yeah, what do you what do you do? Learn from your mistakes and go on, I guess. But uh, yeah, I, I really do wish I would have picked up on that. It didn't look as bad as I make it out to be, and I'm sure most people it, most people wouldn't even register to. But you're not the ones living with it, <laughs> I guess. So. Again, this is just thinned down quite a bit, retarder, and it's just a very, very small batch. And uh, this was quite easy to paint on, which I was very happy about. All right, we're coming to the final color to the underside here. And I believe this was JN Gray. JN Gray has a bit of a uh, bluish tint to it. And out of the pictures that I saw, it was like almost identical to this color. Uh, I was really amazed. And again, I wanted to add a bit of that blue that Swedish aircraft have, and instead I made it a bit green. Um, and what I'm doing here is I have thinned the paint down quite a bit again. I think about 60, 40, um, 60 thinner, 40% paint ratio and again some more retarder and I'm just lightly painting it on and what I'm doing is I, I painted more in between the panels um, in between the brown areas uh, very much like I had done with the um, with with the sky color there uh, but then later what I went and did is I painted lightly kind of dusting over the, the brown so it is there but it's very very subtle it's not quite as dominant and this is, you know, uh, very nicely blending all my colors together. And in the end, I came up with this really cool looking color. I was very happy with it in the end. Again, it wasn't quite as accurate as I was hoping, but it was still a really nice color. And I was really pleased with how it turned out and how much fun it was to, to go ahead and try this.
So you can see here I've painted the brown of the panel lines and I also went ahead and painted the uh, cockpit, that nice cockpit green for the frame lines and everything like that. So this is the one color I do know, <laughs> I do remember. This is XF81 RAF green. Um, this color came out for the 32nd scale Tamiya Spitfire. It was one of the exclusive uh, three paints that they made for that kit in the lacquer and I think a lacquer. I know at least they did in the acrylic range. Um, and when I was doing, again, my research, I noticed that this color was almost exact what I was looking for in this color. It's got kind of a drab, olive drab to it, but it still is a bit bright. It's not quite as drab. Um, and I just, I really liked it. And I did run into some airbrushing problems here. Um, this was all due to my own uh, fault here. Uh, and I've since learned from this is whenever I run out of paint, I like to flush it out with Windex and really clean it get everything out and so I can mix a new batch of paint because sometimes it just sits there a little while longer and you know even though I think it's clean I like to do something a little bit more strong when I'm doing smaller batches like this and I need to do um, better more defined detail work so again I'm just doing the exact same thing that I did on the underside except I'm only using the two colors the brown and the green I'm painting the brown uh, sorry, the green on here in all these splotches. I'm making it the dominant color and you'll see how that turned out in a moment here. But the reason why I use brown is because I've noticed in some older aircraft uh, when there's wood, they sometimes build up a brown uh, patina. And I noticed that when I was visiting the Mosquito in Nanton along the panel frames there's this dark brown patina and it looks very, very nice. And that was kind of what I was trying to replicate with this here without it having to be so bold. It's very, very subtle, which is really what I was going for. Okay, here I'm just blending the colors together. I've just, I've painted everything green and I'm adding a subtle layer. Uh, you can kind of see how far away I'm keeping my airbrush right now. Uh, I'm trying to make this nice subtle layer blending the green and the brown together so there's a bit of a green on top of it. Um, it was a little hard for the camera to pick it up but there's several locations and the light's just hitting it right and you can you can see what I was trying to go for. So it was successful but that's really kind of harder to do with uh, darker colors no matter what you're doing especially with this with this nice green here. Um, although I, I think it did turn out to be successful. It was a bit hard to do it and it did take a bit of uh, juggling around. But like I said before, I was very happy with it. Um, this is a, again, a light pressure and just slowly, well, it's rather quickly, I guess, moving the, uh, the, the airbrush around and um, just making that nice final layer, getting everything together. And I think the green especially turned out really really well again it's not as noticeable as the underside but i was very happy with it so i consider that a successful venture all right so here you're going to see a couple little issues i'm going to talk about these in a second here i added a bit of xf4 uh, yellow green to the green here and I think I just mixed it up into the pot and that's why I was rubbing it against my or spraying it against my hand there as I was trying to get the paint to activate. I should have cleaned out my airbrush because um, obviously bits of it were settling here and all I was trying to do is here are these areas that you can see I'm painting on the front of the wing and on the top of the fuselage and on the stabilizers. Uh, I was trying to play I was trying to do something it was a bit of a tr of, uh, experiment. Uh, a lot of times when you see aircraft parked outside, these are usually the areas that are the highest and so they're usually brighter. And I wanted to try and mimic that because it's a scale model and it's basically going to be behind a, a door all the time, a glass door. So I wanted to try and mimic that and see if it would work and uh, it was fairly successful I think, but part of it is the small scale. But again, it was a fun little venture to try and make these little just brighten areas on the top and the sides there. So. I think it was a successful experiment. Never before have I been so happy to have future on top of decals. Um, I recorded this originally and I kept running into problems. 
and I tried it again. I kept running into problems, so I basically said, screw it, I'm not going to record any of this. And I didn't. The decals are, to say difficult, would be putting it mildly. They were very, very, very difficult, very fussy. I did not have a good time putting them on as I usually do. Um, a lot of the stencils broke. I wasn't able to use some of them, like the one here on the bottom. Um, you might notice that this one is missing right here. There's another one of these that's supposed to be here. Um, basically, that one once it hit the water, just poof, yeah, it was unbelievable. And these are these aren't old decals. They're not old. They're just so thin, so 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 thin. And I'm really happy to have a gloss coat on here, and I don't have to hopefully worry about them anymore. Um, yeah, that was just not fun at all. But like I mentioned, they're on there. Um, I my method works slightly, and that was to have a very gloss surface to begin with, and not use any solvents to just use water. And that did work quite well, but again, they were just so they're so delicate. It 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 really was the most intense decal session of my life. I I can't stress that enough. It was just because I don't have a replacement for these things. I don't even know where to get a replacement. Otherwise, I honestly would have. They were just so fragile and I can't recommend these decals to anyone especially people who don't like decaling um, I'm gonna go buy some micro scale liquid decal film I think that may have helped a little bit I'm definitely gonna go commit to buying a bottle of that now after this uh, they needed they definitely needed some kind of a coat on them uh, again I don't know how, how big of a difference I would have made um, but um, they're on there. I forgot to gloss this one here for the nose or cowling So They look good This one cracked and I'm amazed that it actually you can't even see it. I can hardly see it I'm the one that had to put them together but it um, This is hard to register It cracked Where's my pointer? about right here and I had it on the on the paper and there was a piece of something on it and it was like a little bit of plastic and I just went to, to push it off with my hand and it went <laughs> just broke and I panicked <laughs> thankfully I put it on there got it in its position flattened it got the other one on there and it it worked somehow it worked beyond the modeling God and the natures of the universe um, I had only a few little instances with it. Again, I'm really sad this one's gone. I really wish I could have kept that one, but oh well. Again, they're on there. They're done. I'm glossing it. I'm going to let it dry for a few days, and I'm going to just come back to it and be refreshed and ready to go at it again. Because right now, uh, looking at it, I'm a little stressed, but it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um... It was just, it was a lot of work. So I'm going to go paint like all these little areas here. These need to be silver. That needs to be silver. Um, got to go off the cowling. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to finish working on the spinner here. So this is going to have that, um, that curl in a spiral. So still lots of little sub assemblies to do. But I'm very close, very, very close to being done, which is very exciting because I really want to see this one on the shelf all done up. It was very, it's been very, very fun so far. So like I said, I'm going to go do that right now and I will be back when I figure out what I'm going to do next. All right. I was kind of on a roll with my work. I just kept going and going and going and I got quite a bit done on this as you can see. I mounted the engine first once that had dried um, then it came time to mount the cowling. That was a bit difficult. I mostly glued it on the bottom here um, next to the struts there 
and just a little bit on the top. There weren't really any contact points. I was kind of hoping it was going to hit the top of the engine, but nope. Um, and then I mounted on the propeller, as you can see, and I it's a little wobbly, but that's okay. I don't mind it that much because it actually leaves it free to spin, which I'm pretty darn excited about. I think it looks great. Um, as you can also see, I added on the wheels and painted them up. They're all done, and they're very makes it very very tall. You remember I mentioned talking about what that would be like to land and take this thing off with this very very kind of tall teetering landing uh, system. Be very nerve wracking, um, which explains the videos when you see these the one that they have that they can start up and. It, uh, it's wobbling so much. Uh, that would be actually kind of scary to be in an aircraft like that. You know, you've got to have one person on another wing there just to hold it down. Um, but it looks pretty darn good. I'm very, very happy with it, with how everything turned out. The propeller, again, everything. Um, the next step for me is I'm going to give it a flat coat. I'm going to go do that tonight. So I'm going to give it a flat coat, and then I'm going to add on this exhaust. This is the exhaust that this specific aircraft has. It's one that shoots out of the uh, out of the back here, and you don't use the second option, which is part 14. So you can see here it kind of pushes it out instead of along the fuselage. So I'm going to add that part on. Hopefully it'll fit properly. I'm a little nervous about that. And then I'm going to uh, make a little bit of an exhaust trail going down the side. I'd like to do that. Um, I think that would be quite a fun little addition to finishing this off and how kind of weathered it looks that will just add a bit more to the to it. It hasn't really been combat used but it's been flown around quite a bit. I'm not going to do a panel line wash on this particular model because of all the pre-shading that I did before and you can still see it. If I were to do a panel line wash it would it would kill all that detail and I definitely don't want to do that. Um, because again, I think that's I think this is all more than enough. I don't really want to overdo it on a smaller scale. If it was probably bigger, 30 second scale, I probably would do something like that. But yeah, that's my game plan for right now. Uh, after the exhausts are done, we get to take off the maskings for the window, which I'm terribly excited about. And yeah, then we'll be done. I'm really excited. It's almost done. Almost done. And then I can go work on my big project that I want to do. It's going to be quite an undertaking. Anyways, you'll see that one later. We're focusing on this right now. Alright everybody, here it is. It is done. I gave it a flat coat last night. I added on the exhaust here on the side and added this exhaust streak. Down the side of the fuselage there. Um, not entirely happy with how that turned out, but could have been a little bit better. But I'm... Um, I'm going to live with it. I think it'll be quite well, work out well in the end. I use these Temia weathering kits for that. Um, but uh, yeah, here she is. It's all done. I just took off the masks. They look, they look quite nice. So I'm very happy with those. And um, quite happy with the model in general. Um, I, had, I had a really fun time doing this this little kit. Um, you know, rescribing it didn't take me that long to do. I like all the little rivets that I was able to add in there, especially on the bottom. And the bit of pre-shading uh, I was able to do and, and keep, you know, again, especially on the underside and, and the brown on top. I think that turned out quite well. I really did like this kit. It, you know, despite its small fit issues, which were quite easy to overcome, the only thing I did not like were the decals, and, and uh, to be honest, I would buy this kit again. If I found another one at a good price, I really would buy another one. Because um, like I said, there's quite a few options that come in the in the box here. Um, especially this one here, I really like this one with the, with the white stripes, I'd love to build that one one day. But, I don't want to ever have to deal with these tech mod decals again, they were not fun at all. Um, some modelers can handle them. Uh, I'm, I'm a modeler that likes decals. I think it's a fun process, but these were a nightmare, and they drove me insane. So I'm glad. They're, I'm very glad that they're on and uh, that they're sealed and flat coated, so they're not coming off um, anytime soon. Thankfully, um, 
again, it's it's a really nice kit. It's quite simple in its build. There's a couple little tricky parts like the landing struts. They were a bit, eh, took a little bit to get going, and once I got them on there, they they fit on quite well. The general fit of the kit is pretty darn good. You know, th there's not too many places where I was, you know, having having difficulty with it or. Um, really had to sand down a lot to get it to fit properly. I didn't run into any issues like that, really. You know, aside from the minor usual stuff. Um, again, it just it looks great. It's a nice subject. It's a very very fun little little aircraft. You know, it's kind of an oddball, and I really like that. Um, I really just like having it. So, a special thanks to Rob at Basic Modeling for not buying this kit, and then letting while encouraging me to get one as well because I, I really enjoyed it I really had a lot of fun on this little guy and I, I just like the I like the look and the feel and the shape of this aircraft it's just it's very very fun I had a very fun time airbrushing it and seeing it sitting here like this all done I'm, I'm just really happy really really pleased with how it turned out and again if I found another one I'd buy it in a heartbeat I think it's a very 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 nice very fun model and uh yeah not much to it except to buy another decal sheet so that's my that's my only gripe with it um so i don't know what else there is to say thanks everybody for watching i hope you've enjoyed this build i'm gonna uh try and include uh a build of this i don't remember how many pictures i took but i did try and do a, a build um kind of on a regular basis of this kit and that will be available on the blog, so be sure to check that out. That's rebels at cloud9.blogspot.ca. Uh, yeah, I, I, there's a link to it on the homepage if I didn't include one down below, which I probably did, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and got another project that I'm working on here. And I'll be back with more inbox reviews, more model kit builds in the near future. So subscribe, stay tuned to that. You can also leave a comment down below if you like. And I'll do my best to reply to those. So thanks for watching, guys. This is Rebels of Cloud 9. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go fly this around the room. So if you haven't learned anything, at least you learned what not to do. I'll see you guys next time.